Howdy, howdy, howdy do. It is time to Pal World with you. We played this game yesterday for a good chunk of time, and I think a easy way to evaluate my experience was that I didn't move for five hours and just played the video game. <laughs> so I have a short uh, stream for today, for those of you watching on Twitch. Um, <laughs> I forgot our character was Thickalo. Oh my god, that's so funny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, today, I'm going to largely kind of do a lot of the, frankly, basic tasks. I'm going to start by probably chopping a bunch of wood and depositing it into these chests. Because none of my little pals can chop wood. Then I'm going to try to continue to level up my base and do more and more and more and more stuff in my base. Um, in terms of progressing the level ups. And then I will maybe eventually get around to doing more rich exploration. I mean, right now, I have not even really gone very far at all. And I think this is... There's still a lot of areas to explore over here, areas to explore over here. I kind of just went wild and just ran for a little bit to see what was up. I got myself killed a little bit. And there it is. So, uh, first things first, let me just make sure I have all my little... Yeah, I have the mining pals, I have transporting pals and the lamb balls. We have some watering, and I think that there's... There's one other thing I wanted to see. Which is that these guys... They do watering. But then it's harvesting time. So the planter works, the harvesters... Do I have harvesters? I just can't figure this out. Uh, F. So, farming is here. I assume that it's either farming is needed to get it or planting is needed to get it, but whatever. The important thing, though, is I have a, a somewhat self-sufficient base. I have seven of those dudes. I think I have seven beds. Yep. They're dumping the seeds again and again in the feed bin. Put some bread in there. You know, that's my bread. Oh, and I forgot. I died. Where's my body? Oh, there it is. It's way the hell over there. Okay, so let's first go get our body. Uh, base upgrade. So we'll need a hot spring, of course. We were trying to do... There's where I died. We were trying to farm for pal fluids... And I died. <laughs> we need 10 to be able to build the hot springs to level up. And I'm kind of going to let that be my guide. Because, I mean, I really like a lot of structure and guidance in games, as you heard me go on a big rant about in the last one. Now, to those of you who are saying happy partner anniversary, I want to let you know. I don't actually think it's my Twitch partner anniversary. This feature is brand new to me. What is that? All right, I'm gonna take all of it. Oh, and if I hit take all, it re-equips everything. Very nice. All right, well, do I have any? I don't have any arrows. Well. I don't have any arrows. I don't have any pal balls. Oh my god, how embarrassing. All right, well, let's let's just head home. Let's just head home. Why do I have two bows? Why not? I mean, the actual answer is one's a fire bow that shoots fire arrows. One is a regular old bow that shoots regular old arrows. And I, I feel like I'm going to play this game a good chunk because I am utterly fascinated by this style of game. I mean, not I don't mean specifically survival crafting. I mean a game that seems to have come out of nowhere and is now the number one game. Like, I feel there's almost an obligation to me as a game dev to make sure that I am researching properly. Robert Rome, thanks for the gifted five. All right, there's the arrows. There's the arrows. 66 pal spheres. And uh, fire arrows. Max, what are we low on? We're low on flame organs. All right. 
So we're going to need a bunch of flame organs, which does mean we're going to be needing to do murder. Genghis Qualls, you've mentioned playing board games with friends in the past. Have you played anything fun recently? Honestly? Dominion. I have always loved Dominion, and whenever it's time to play a new board game, it's very hard to convince me not to just play Minions. Play, excuse me, play more Dominions. I really like Dominion a lot. Where's my hot men? Am I going the right way? I am. I thought there were flamio hot men over here. Alright, there's the Pengullet. What's Dominion? Dominion is the first game to have deck building. As a core gameplay mechanic. Whoopsie daisies. I mean, this guy's happy, but I need to get his fluids, so, you know, away we go. Haven't played Wingspan, but I have a friend who's, who's like, you have to play Wingspan! For those of you who have never watched Avatar The Last Airbender, um, Flamio Hotman was the... Covert name of Aang in the Fire Nation. Flamio, my hot man. Ay, ay, ay. Die. Oops. Come here. So how many uh, of these do I have? I have three pal fluids, and I think I have four back home. I'm gonna go hunt for three more anyways. Is there an arrow count? Yeah, actually, let me... See it? There it is. Hunting for pals. Hunting uh, for pals. But yeah, no, uh, Dominion is a game. It's really, it's really, really clever. So, in Dominion, there's a bunch of face-up cards in the center of the table. Let's see if this drops fluids. Oh, oh, I have the wrong button. There's a bunch of face-up cards in the center of the table. And when the game begins, you have... A deck consisting of seven money cards and three victory cards. And during your turn, you can pick up, or you can use your money cards to purchase some of those face-up cards in the middle of the, of the table. And these cards will say things like, draw three cards. Like one of the cards that you buy goes into your deck, and if you play it, it might say, draw three cards. Oops. Or you might have, uh, you know, another card that says you may play two more cards this turn. And so, even though everyone starts with seven money cards and three victory cards, you start purchasing these action cards from the center of the table that do all sorts of things and do sorts of things with each other. And then as the game goes on, there is eventually a condition that causes the game to end. And should that happen, the winner is whoever's deck has the most victory cards in it. However, victory cards don't actually um, do anything in your hand. So, for instance, if you buy too many victory cards, you might draw a hand that's like victory, 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 money card. And now oh, I only have one money card. I can't afford anything, so on and so forth. And so it's really fun to try to figure out when is the right time to keep building this engine of drawing cards and playing more actions. Whoops. Oh, not this way. So 
So you're trying to time how much to invest in building this set of interactions in your deck that will then spiral off to infinity. Or when you start to buy more victory point cards. And it's just, it's so much fun because it's it's very pure and it's a very economic game. And, you know, I'm someone that played StarCraft and played a lot of strategy games and I like the focus on resources and resource management and synergy and all this sort of good stuff. I just find it very, 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 very fun. And, I mean, it's just hard to convince me to play another game. Because I've played some other deck-building games that try to take what Dominion did and, like, build on it. And it winds up with something that's a little more complicated and a little less fun, and that's it. I'm just wandering around right now trying to find some of these chili dudes. Cool. Don't you malign Ascension like that? I played Ascension a few times and I did not like it at all. And ever since then, I've heard people be like, what? Sounds like you were playing it wrong. And I just don't remember enough of what I was doing to make a comment on that. Holy shit. Man, these windows of, uh, of when it considers you invulnerable seem pretty generous. She did not die. Like, that was insanely generous. Oh, I didn't, I forgot that the other one is still up there. Got him. Oh, it's incapacitated? I wonder how to bring him back. Day 9 8 Mushroom. Oh, I've unused stat points. You know what? We're doing this, baby. Yeah, I've heard of Star Realm, but I, I don't really know anything about it. I'm ready to do this again and again and again. Whoa. See, I, I can't tell if it missed or whether this game is just super generous with these windows. Ouch. Ow. Oh, it didn't, it didn't grenade bounce backwards? 39. You're fucking kidding me. It just, it literally, as it was exiting the ball, it shoots me. I don't believe it. Ugh. Ugh. All right. Fast travel. I want to go here. Well... Fuck a duck. Oh my god, and it's nighttime and I have to go to bed. Ugh, kill me! No! Alright, it's fine. Uh, where's my beautiful waterfall side bed? You'll get him next time, day nine. 
Oh. Corporate Charles says, hey, Chad, missed yesterday's stream. Did you talk about the controversy on this? See so many outlandish claims and trust day nine cents on the issues with this. Yeah, I, I mean, we talked about some of them, but my summary issue is, my understanding is that there has been accusations of AI assets being used in the game, but I don't actually know if any of that has panned out because I recall that someone said, yup, they used AI stuff and then like retracted the article. So that kind of like half got propagated out. So that's, that's one thing. Um, the second thing is it's similarity to Pokemon. There was that one. Um, I want to go to the left, right? Yeah. There was also, um, I don't think there's any other ones than those. Yeah, and I also know there were some claims like they, they're using the exact models of Pokemon characters and someone analyzed the polygons and I saw one instance where that was also retracted. Where it was claimed and propagated, then someone looked into it and was like, no, just in one. Uh. Yeah, the same model seems confirmed to be faked. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so like, generally when I see controversy, typically what I do is I just wait. Um... And I mean, there, there's obviously controversy that is it's easy to not wait. Like, if there was a, a video of a streamer taking a running punch at a baby for no reason. I don't really need to wait for more information. <laughs> I feel like I have all the intel that I so need. Um, but yeah, in terms of the specific substance of critique that someone might have, I, I do tend to ju I just wait. Um, and so when it, when it comes to some of the specifics around this game, um, like, so, so my, my brief, my brief summary uh, of some of those is like AI wise, I think that having continued conversation about AI is really healthy because there's a lot of feel bad stuff. For instance, if I had a really unique art style and I spent years developing it and made lots of images in that style, and then an AI trained on it and just produced it for someone else's work, I don't know, that feels kind of weird. That kind of feels bad. And there's a lot of things that in terms of legality started with, well, I don't like that, that feels bad. Even something as simple as like, yeah, I want to be, I walked right by this, didn't I? Even, even simple things like, what is the specific hour at which we determine that someone is working overtime? That used to not exist, but then someone was like, you know, that feels bad. So, so there's a lot of potential feel bads around AI. There's also a lot of potential feel goods. Like if I'm an artist and I spent years developing a particular style and I can create 3D models only so quickly, but I have an AI that's trained on my work to help me generate my stuff even faster. That feels really good. Uh, and so, again, I don't think there's a lot of information about what specifically is going on, but I by and large think that the conversations are healthy and fine. Um, and then I think that the... Um, around the similarity to Pokemon, I, I sort of have a, um, my, my sort of attitude of that is like, if it is, uh, in a literal sense, ripping off the IP. I mean, I just, I don't know how to determine that and I need an IP lawyer to handle that. And if there is an opportunity to do that in a way that's sensible, great. Whoops. Right. And I think that that when it comes to like, but hey, I personally have scoured, uh, you know, the media scape and I have seen definitively that there's just really not that many games that look like this except for Pokemon. The example that I used was, and again, I don't know Pokemon very well, period. 
the example I used was that like Blizzard art has a oops has a very specific look and feel to it. Oh, do I still get the fire organ if I capture it? That's a question that I don't actually know the answer to. Um. Got him. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna watch. Oh, I do get the flame organ. Oh my god, I didn't need to be killing these people all this time. Oh, oh, oh how embarrassing! I'm gonna keep killing them. Um, with Blizzard's initial art style, there were so many people that said, whoa, we want to do something exactly like that. Oh my gosh. And there were also a lot of other fantasy artists that were trying to do their own twist, but were taking cues from the way that Blizzard established its own uh, you know, style. Uh, you know, huge pauldrons and a lot of really dramatic action figure-esque flair to their characters. And if you look at the way that stylized footmen with swords look in Warcraft games and Blizzard games, and outside of that, we just sort of see them as, yeah, they're just different variations on like a sort of common theme that's very sort of game art looking. Um, and with Pokemon having so, there's like over a thousand Pokemon, if you're trying to come up with, um, like, like, so I want to point out some of the things about the way that this model looks. So um, I'm trying to think of a way to see if there's any art asset in game. Okay, yeah. Look at these trees. If you look at the leaves, it, it's there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of detail. There's a lot of texture. There's a lot of stuff going on in these leaves. Even the bark. Look at this bark. There is a lot of nuanced detail in the way that the bark looks, both in terms of its depth and its color and just the, the amount of pixels devoted to detail. If you look at this character, um, something that's really common to give something more of a cartoonish look is you emphasize very broad, bold strokes and lines, and you do away with lots of detailed... Um, um, lots of details on the texture. So for instance, you can see the tree to my left, the bark has a lot of noise and detail in it, but then you look at this character and it's just almost a flat white scarf looking set of fur. And the ears have light green fur and then dark green fur, done. That's it. There's no gradation. There's tons of gradation in different shades of brown on this bark that's to my side. And you even look at this sort of weird pin cushion thing. Everything is very bold, broad shapes, simple line work, bold colors, not a lot of gradients. And this gives it a very cartoonish look and feel. And this is just like a technique. This is just a choice. If you say, I wanna have a thousand creatures and we're going to use simple line strokes with very dramatic visual uh, cues to identify. So for instance, this dude has a huge pincushion um, looking thing on its back. It's got big ears, horns, and a tail, and it's green. Done, right? It's not about the subtlety of, you know, small elements, you know, like the sideways sash on Han Solo would look weird if it was a little too straight. That's a real detail, right? This is super blunt, plain stuff. And if that is the stylistic choice that you select and you want to have a thousand or so dudes, you, in a very literal sense, you just don't have that much. There's only so many visual designs that you can make. If I wanted to make a powerful warrior and I wanted to read instantly to a player as a powerful warrior, I'm probably going to have broad shoulders. I'm probably going to have big muscles. You know, there's things where like a scowl and a scar, like these things just instantly read. And yes, you could have a very lithe person that's smiling and has a, a face that looks ready for a skincare commercial, right? Just perfect porcelain skin, thin figure. And they're just going, yeah, you can make that person a powerful warrior in your story. I'm just saying it won't instantly read as a powerful warrior in the same way that a scowling, scarred, ripped, muscly dude would. 
holding an axe and going and growling. Having blood on him, you know. This sort of shit. And so, there is a statement of, is it similar to Pokemon or is it not? I'm sort of viewing that different from, is that unreasonable for it to have similarities to Pokemon or not? Because there's an argument to be made. Gotcha. Didn't have to kill you. There's the discussion of does it or does it not look similar, period. There's that discussion. But then there's, let's assume it does. Is that reasonable or unreasonable? Palm Jesus, does intention matter in this? Um, I think legally speaking, yes. I think legally, yes. I think. I mean, I'm not, again, I'm not an IP lawyer, and this is one of the reasons why I keep going. This is why I want to figure that out. Go to the IP lawyer. Because, you know, th th there are instances of technology being independently developed. And art styles being independently developed. And the fact is, they were just independently developed, and there you go. One boy in all the world says, but other games have made monsters that don't look like Pokemons. There's a reason why this game in particular is getting called out. I didn't, I'm not going to make the claim that it is impossible to make something that looks different from Pokemon. Definitely don't want to make that claim. I am saying, given an artistic st uh, style choice, to use this sort of like bold lines, bold colors, simple line work, really strong identifiable features, going for an elemental creature's theme from an IP law standpoint I am not qualified to say whether it infringes or does not infringe but what I am saying is is it unreasonable if it looks similar so if I said to you for instance I want to have blocky action figure-esque characters in my high fantasy game and I want to use bright, vibrant colors. And that's my stylistic choice. Guys get to work. They might wind up getting something that looks kind of similar to World of Warcraft. Because those are some of the same artistic cues from World of Warcraft. Guard. Wandering guard. What? He has a gun? Oh, these guys are way stronger than I thought. Whoops. But, I mean, I feel like 99% of my perspective is I'm not a lawyer. It's not even for me to decide. Uh-oh. And 1% of me is going, you know, I, I have seen a lot of different games and styles look really similar to other games and styles and I don't I don't think it's unreasonable for certain games to have overlaps with other games in terms of their visuals it just I've seen it happen so many times roll roll I look like I'm playing EDF now but yeah so I mean and things that I have not been keeping that up to date on the controversy the the biggest things that I have seen and heard is people resenting their previous claims. Notably, I remember there was the uh, articles about like, oh yeah, they are using the exact model from this game. These guys have crazy armor. Using the exact models from this game, or this is AI generated, and all of those turned out to be unsubstantiated that I've seen. But like I said, I've not looked extensively at it. Three damage at a time, baby. Oh, my, my bird of the day is dead? Oh, whoops. Get me the fuck out of here.
Armor's damage. Oh, the weapon is damage. Oh my god. Ah! Evasive maneuvers. There is no way that drop killed me. There is no way. There is no way that drop killed me. I specifically took that drop to... Oh, because I've been... I, I know exactly what happened. I've been taking dives and seeing that I only lost like 10 health or so. So in my head, I'm like, I only lose 10 health. I lost all my shield in 10 health, I think is what's actually happening. Either way, this game is pathetic. Everything that the content creators have done for this game is a scam! Is this the Elden Ring fall? Oh my god. Well, it won't prevent you from taking lethal fall damage. Boom, boop, boop, boom, 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 boom. So I need to go here. Why I sit still? Do I regain any? Is this a cave? No, it's just a little darker. All right. Igneous Isis. Okay, real talk though. How does that Elden Ring trinket work? I tried it a bunch and still died. The way it works is if you would fall and it would kill you, it just still kills you. But if you fall and would lose, say, 80 health due to the fall damage, you just don't lose that 80 health. So that's why I wasn't dealing any damage to those. Fuck holes. Some more Forgans. Uh, what's the other thing that I'm missing here? Uh, why not? Yeah. Because there is a specific place that I actually think I still have not yet gone to in Stormvale Castle. That I was like, oh yeah, I get to go there. Oh my god, I don't take fall damage. What are, what are you doing, guy? What are you doing? My character, yeah, Thickalo. Best name ever. Oops, oops. Oh, shift, let, let's go. Okay, well, that's helpful. Yeah, I learned. Yeah, I, th I think the, probably the, the biggest thing that I think about the controversy is that if you have an unbelievably tiny audience and half the people who play your game hate it. All right, I need to find a resting spot. If you have a tiny audience of, say, a thousand players and half of them hate it, you have 500 haters. If you have a gargantuan audience that 1% hates the game, you have 10 million players and 1% hate the game, that's 100,000 haters. I'm using haters, which is a little bit more of a derogatory term, but like, let's say, uh, dislikers. Reasonable dislikers. Who just reasonably dislike. <laughs> um, Spunkified, Spunkified, if you can just not call our mods twats when they're just trying to be thoughtful. We'd appreciate that. But Spunkified, I will answer your question. Um, your question was along the lines of, is it one of those really broad games that's not really deep? 
Um, is it one of these games that actually does have depth? You know, wh what do I think about some of the depth-related things? That I might think about this game. And I, I think that there are... There's an element to, I think, all survival crafting games, which is that the game can operate slow. So, oh my god, it's this way? All right. We're, for instance, with this particular game, dude, like, I am just trying to get to 10 PAL fluids. And, oh my god, I was just wandering around trying to find pals to stab. But then my bow's broken, and then my my pals are just all incapacitated, and I can't do anything. Ugh. And so, like, there's an argument to be made of, I'm doing the same stuff over and over again. I'm constantly going back, I'm constantly repairing, I'm constantly uh, just kind of wandering to do stuff. But, you know, like, I, 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 I kind of like that experience, if I'm being honest. I, I kind of do. I think it gives a nice little bit of uh, structure to the game that I appreciate. Um, because, like, now I can say, all right, well, let me put this away. Cool, I can put that there. So now I can actually build this hot spring that I've been trying to build for a while. And I do this. Okay, now, now when that's finally done, I'm going to wake up tomorrow and I'm going to do some good stuff. All right. And that might feel a little bit, um... That, I think, can add to the feeling of, like, I'm doing the same stuff, so this game just feels broad. I can go to 18 million different places, but I still go out and get the resources and come back. Go out and get the resources and come back. What would make that fresh? Different enemies. Varied locations. Varied um, objectives. Varied combat. If the needs actually change in terms of how the logistics of the base operates. I think Factorio is a good example of this, where, like, hey, you first learn how conveyor belts work. So then you're conveyor belting things along everywhere. But then you start to need fluids, and fluids don't go on conveyor belts. You have to use pipes, and pipes function differently than conveyor belts. Oh, and then you need to do long-range transport, so you have to learn trains. So you can use conveyor belts to bring things to this train, to load it, to bring it down here, to then output from that train onto conveyor belts, or maybe also with fluids. And then eventually you get bots, and so bots and trains and fluids and conveyor belts, they all function differently and then they all interoperate differently. And so learning that can feel like depth. I don't know what it's going to be like when I get to hour 20 of this game. I truly don't. Oops, I forgot to queue up fire arrows. And so I think thus far, some of where I feel like there's a fork in the road for me. Uh, let's see you, see you, see you, see you. Which one of these? Lift monks are amazing. This guy can just do planting, but a lift monk can do literally everything. Hell yeah. Gathering, lumbering. Oh my god, I need to go find lift monks. Like, this moment where I go, oh my god, I need to find lift monks. Where can I go to get lift monks? I think that one of the better places to go get lift monks is if I go to here, to these fort ruins, and then scout up this way. I think that's where I saw them. Like, that is a cool, interesting, fun moment. How's that going to change? There's a fork where... Oh, yep, there's just the one best base composition. You just do that. Cool. Or... It could start to get really interesting where there starts to be becoming, again, like I said, this interoperability of different pals and all that stuff. I don't know. I don't really know how it's going to go. But I'm open to the idea that this game could become fucking boring so much. I'm open to that idea. I'm also open to the idea that 
This is the best fucking game ever. <laughs> and and honestly, I I I only trust me. I'm gonna make another chest. I, I I only trust me when it comes to evaluating games. Oh my god, that's the other thing I needed to do. Well, it looks like I'm gonna have a lot more time to talk. I think we need to just block URLs. I only trust me because there are games that people find... Like, for instance, I find Dota 2 to be incredibly relaxing. I find it to be a very chill game. That's me. There it is. I find moments in this game where I have to think a little bit more of what plan I want to do. I find it to be more intense than playing Dota. Now, to be clear, I'm not good at Dota. <laughs> and I'm also not trying to improve, and I kind of just picked the same five heroes, and I have for years, and it's great. Oh, it just feels so good. And part of the reason why I find it relaxing is that I, I've played so many games, it's very familiar. It requires enough focus that I can't think about work or the studio or problems. I can't think about any of that stuff. It's great. Bang on Fire says, I miss seeing you on Panel of the International. Ah, uh, yes. One time TI host day nine. I came and went. I was the Ashitaka of hosting. Perhaps I shall return and eventually save the entire city. And if some of you have not picked up on this reference, then I sound like a megalomaniac. I'm going to make a new chest and dump it all in. Horn. Large damp egg. How I think of you. <laughs> All right. I have Hengar Bengar. All right. Day nine ate the berries. So, God, if I get another one of these lift monks, that'd be great. Lift monks are goaded. Do these guys also do transport? Dude, this this, this is the composition. I'm gonna get another lift monk. I mean, for now, I guess I will. Um... All right. So, part of why I think that this game might have a lot more depth is that this implies that with 50 levels of different technology, that there's a lot of cool contraptiony buildery thingies that I might need to make to be able to generate enough resources to get those ammos. It could also be what I will call the one-dimensional depth, where it's like early game, there's stone and wood, so you can make stone weapons and wood arrows. And then when you get advanced, you can make you can get silver and gold, which lets you make silver weapons and silver arrows. And it's the same thing, it's one to one. I need to make some more beds. That's not what I wanted.
So I don't know. I don't know. So I'm kind of just sharing some of the things that I think. I mean, I am having a lot of fun so far. And if there's one thing I will say that I, I definitively like. I didn't pick up my fire arrows, did I? All right. is that the complexity is kind of hidden. It kind of doles out the complexity to me. Flip a coin, flip a coin, one time. On right back. We are thick. Oh, baby, we're, we're thick alone. Shelly Malise says, ah, I should go to bed, but I really enjoy this stream. Dude, this is the nightmare of enjoying streamers, man. Oh my god, it sucks. Oh my god, this is happening to me so much. Oh, especially if there's a really compelling game of Dota. And I'm like, dude, I just need to finish this game. And then when it ends, I was like, that was awesome. And then they, they their queue immediately pops, and I'm like, well, I may as well just watch the draft. <laughs> and then it loops forever, and then it just, I can't, I can't get out. Uh, what do I need to do? See ya. See ya. Get in. What? Oh. What is a tan... Dude. Dude, tansies. Tansies are awesome, too. What's this one? What's this? Medicine production? Get out. Get out. Get in. Need a lot of transpo here. Nice. Okay, so let's... I don't know. See, uh, upgrading attack feels so bad. I get plus two? I mean, give me a break. Alright. Medieval medicine workbench. High quality workbench. Uh What? Fox Parks Harness? Harness for holding Fox Parks? What now? What? All right, I guess I'll get that. All right, what else do we have? Tundra outfit? Seems cool. Uh, oh, metal pickaxe. Ooh, we, we need ingots. Oh, and we need nails? All right, so we need, we need to get nails. What was the other one I wanted me to make? High quality workbench, a medieval medicine workbench. All right, cool. Nails. So let's 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 make some ingots. Ingots getting made. Fire arrows. F. Fire arrows. Max. Star production. Some of these. Max. Star production. Some of these. Tundra outfit. Start. F. I'm pressing F. Toad says, so when I first heard about this game, I thought, wow, this game is doing so much. There's no way it's doing it well. It seems so far like I'm wrong on that front. Well, 
Uh, here, here's what. Look, oh, let, oh, let, 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 let me explain to you something, okay? Let us take Counter Strike in the map Dust Two. <laughs> Getting the multiplayer networking functioning, that's its own problem, right? So I'm going to set that aside. But let's assume that you have multiplayer networking functioning. Well, you have an economy. You have to manage the money and the rewards and what the costing of things are. And then you have this round structure. And then you have the way that guns fire. You know, like, if you know exactly what the design is supposed to be, it, it doesn't take that long to make those things. Again, there's multiplayer networking aside there. It doesn't actually take that long to implement those stuff and get pretty damn close to Counter-Strike. The hard part is figuring out what those things are and how they intersect with each other. Oh, 25 defense. Fuck yeah. To the bin. Um, yeah, figuring out what to do is the hard part. And so, in a sense... Just making an arrow fire like this, this is not individually that complicated. The AI that's managing these guys, individually, like again, if you said, Sean, literally make this, that's not that individually complicated. And a lot of these things fall under the individually not that complicated, but the way that they figured out how to assemble them seems to be a lot of the hard part. Because if you're not exactly sure how to do all these different things together and you're testing and trying things, I mean, oh my god, you wind up... I mean, here's how I think the, the pals and the base should work. That'll take time to do, and if you don't like it and you throw it away, you've lost a chunk of time. That chunk might not be that big, but if you do that four more times and you're constantly changing your combat and you're constantly changing your crafting stuff, all those things add up a lot give me this give me these so let's see so this is wait what so Required kindling. Okay, wait. So you can come over here and do this? Okay, 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 okay. To briefly... Uh, by the way, stop fucking backseating me. Fucking motherfuckers. <laughs> Part of the reason why I was confused is that when... when um, a game says kindling, that typically means I need to provide a type of kindling. And I was looking at that interface and I was confused because I was looking for the location in the interface to place kindling. And then I decided to go back there and check to see if it was one of the pals. And yes, there it is. So I mean, That's just a little bit about what was going on in my head. And let's see, Medieval Medicine Workbench. Alright, so this, this I can... Sword Viper says, I feel like this game does this a lot where it doesn't explain how things work. There's a consistent pattern Spartan Viper that I really like. It, it tells you what your goal is. And then it kind of lets you figure it out from there. And there's only so many different ways of interacting with the systems, and they're pretty consistent. Like, try to look at your pals. Try to go find a resource. Try to look at your tech tree. I'm just kind of bouncing among those. I, I, think, it, I think it's pretty effective. I talking about beforehand oh yeah I, I i think that like 
there are games that I've seen that have a lot of systems and a small team and it works really well together. And it's like, how is this possible? And I've also seen games that have a lot of features and a lot of systems and it's all bland and it's all really bumpy and choppy. And I feel like the glue in between the assemblage of that was, is just like what the design of the game is. Um, Austrian lover boy and anyone who's trying to give any suggestions or feedbacks, please. No backseating, no tips, no suggestions, no do this, no nothing. None of that stuff. And the reason is quite simple. I'm having a lot of fun playing this game. I have a lot of fun figuring this sort of stuff out. And you are robbing me of my fun. So this takes ingots. And the other thing that I needed to build was... High quality workbench. I need more ingots. More nails. Alright. Oops. Sure. Stand up. So I'm going to go get some ore. Found it. So to get the next... So, the next thing to get is a metal. Oh. Oh, this just takes ingots? Oh, fantastic. Uh, and do I make this at a crafting table? Did I unlock it? High quality workbench to craft. I. All right. So we need nails, we need wood. All right, cool. First things first, we're gonna chop these trees down and we're gonna chat a little bit. Cause like, dude, my favorite example of a super system heavy game that is awesome, Heroes of Might and Magic 2. Oh my God, I love Heroes of Might and Magic 2. I love it. has just so much going on. And they made those games fast, dude. There was like one year between Here's a Might Magic 1 and Here's a Might Magic 2. Do you have weight limit when collecting items? Yeah, you can see that they do a lot of stuff with dynamic UI. So I have 550 weight. Did something break? Yep. I just need to make bunches of chests because my dummies just keep depositing stuff in random locations. Wrong, wrong thing. How much of that 550 is in those thunder thighs? Dude, the thunder thighs are what let me hold the 550, baby. See, this is... Oh, here we go. There it is. Oh, oh it's the good stuff. All right, time to do just some, some night mining. Night miner.
day of strife has been catching up Baldur's Gate 3 VODs. I've been able to watch live for a while. Really enjoying the adventures of Cox Desalt's Nutby or whatever his name is. Dude, yeah, Nutby is... That, I mean, that is one of the most fun I've ever had. Ever. Ah. I think that game is awesome. <coughs> Do you see a one-handed pour out of a five-gallon jug? Yeah, yeah, see... Day nine for scale, huh? <laughs> day nine is just so big. Oh, oh day nine. Sorry, it's huge. Foxbark produced 20 and got. Probably was Unreal Engine, right? Do you think you'd be able to mod the game? I, I don't know. I, I, modding is something that I actually don't know that much about. Broadly speaking, like, you know, my, my, my exposure to modding is really narrow. It's like Brood War, Warcraft 3, and Starcraft 2. I know have, um, you know, editors that I've opened and, and futzed around inside of. And I'm sure everyone who played Brood War and Starcraft 2 have played use map settings games. But, like... You know, for instance, Nexus mods, where, like, you go to find mods in general. I have friends that literally, when they go look to, to buy a game, they first go to Nexus mods and see what mods there are for the game. I know that Skyrim has just continued to be <laughs> endlessly reassembled. Where's my base? Where's my base? I want to go home. All right, my bed should be on the other side of this waterfall. Because, like, I've been interested in some really narrow quality of life mods. Like in Dark Souls 1, the DS Fix mod was one that I used. There's uh, probably the one that I'm most eager about is the... Uh, I want to play some Factorio mods whenever I have free time. Ha 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 Free time! No, Day 9, you will suffer! Dude, I have, like, no free time at all ever anymore. Ever. Oh, my God. Max. To production. Bye, bye, bye. So, we are going to try to now build... Able Tunis says, I mean, you're the most workaholic individual I know. Is that true? Is that true? I work a lot. However... However, I am doing fun shit. Mike Fury says, if streaming was not work, would you still be playing a lot of games? Um, I, I actually think streaming, for me, is like the perfect kind of experience for 95% of games. Like, for instance... Um, like, for instance, let's take this moment right here. Let's have me not talk for a moment while I look at my inventory. Like, I'm not going to talk for 30 seconds. Let's see how it feels. I couldn't make it. I couldn't make it. I couldn't make it. I couldn't make it. I couldn't do it. Oh, my. Atmos says, thank God he finally shut up. <laughs> Oh, thank fuck. I just want to see him hit the buttons every time he talks. It fucking sucks. I hate day nine. Oh. No, I would like to use a six month subscription because it'll save me a little bit of money. Like, 
articulating things as I'm doing it, because a lot of games are a little too chill for me, and it's like I get itchy. I like, I don't know, it, I, I feel not... I like socializing and chatting and, you know, doing stuff like this and going, oh my god. <laughs> like, saying things like that is really fun. And so streaming is a nice experiential outlet in that regard. What's an accessory? Interesting. And so, like, I, I really think that if I were unable to make money on streaming, I'd still probably stream a good amount. So let's do base upgrade. Oh, yeah, medieval medicine. We nails and polyam fragments. What? I'm out of fragments? Holy moly. Let's see how let's see how good this is. Extremely cool. I don't have any miners here. Because Grimes, have I played Dyson Sphere program? I played it for a day. I played it for a day. But really I, I wanna do really I wanna play Factorio. The Ingots. My name is Sean Ingot. Oh, we need nails. We always need nails and Ingot. Oh my god, we need nails and Ingots. I see it. Hungry. Uh. Oh, I'm so hungry. Oh. Knock the egg right out of him. Yeah, I'm I'm unbelievably excited for the Factorio expansion, insanely. Give me the chicken sound? Yeah, I'm pretty good at chicken noises. Just like generally speaking, as like a life skill. See how good that was. <laughs> see how good that do you see? God, I'm good at that. So good at that. But really, more than anything. Uh, is, is anyone a first-time viewer here? Is it anyone's first time? Because, if you've never been here before, I make a killer goat noise. <laughs> like, that was, that was a little taste. That was a little bit. It's probably surprising. Yeah, there it is. Some of you wish you could make a goat noise like that. <laughs> I I originally practiced this because there were the... Um, what was the name of the goat people in Diablo 1? That whenever you'd kill, they'd be like... Yeah! They'd have this like terrified goat death noise. You're so proud I love it? Yeah, right on. Right on, Sean. What were they called? Was it the Moon Clan? Oh, it was the Moon Clan. Oh my god. I didn't even try to get something goaty in there, man. And I can do, I like, if someone has a, a sort of uh, an expression they would like to make as a goat, I can do that too. Like a surprised goat. Angry goat. I can, like, do it all. It's incredible. Embarrassed goat. See, I can just do it. Happy goat. I can just do it. Can I do a horny goat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can do that. Do <laughs> Pensive goat. <laughs> Got a little horny there. Sometimes that happens when you're deep in thought. We need sound bites. You know what? I hit the button so our editor knows to upload that. Goat sarcasm. Yeah. <laughs> Why can you do all this? <laughs> I don't want to answer that question. Angry goat. Angriest ever. 
that kind of sounded like I was turning inside out, but that's okay. <laughs> Genghis Qualis, can we please go back to the silent segment? <laughs> Here's me being a quiet goat. See how good I am? Birthing goat? <laughs> I don't know how to say it hurts so bad in goat noise. I can't do 30 seconds of quiet goat. I can't. Can you do a nerdy nasally goat? What's a nerdy nas like what's a nerdy nasally person? Is it this kind of voice? Is it this one? In that case, it would be... <laughs> I can do that. Literally, there's nothing you can name that I can't do. I mean, I need both fingers for it. Timmy Goat? Oh, yes, the Timmy voice is up here like this. And if I do the same motion with my tongue... <laughs> that's the hardest one, but I still did it. Holy shit! Eee, eee. See? It's great! Alright, let's get the nails. <laughs> chainsaw says weird time to tune in. Well, good to see you, Chainsaw. Hope you hit that follow button. What am I even doing right now? Oh yeah, I'm making a medicine table. So we're going to go to the build menu. We're going to do the high quality workbench. We need one more ingot. And I know it's not pronounced ingot like that, but it's way more fun to say it like that. <laughs> Deems is literally crying at the moment. That's good. That's good. I hope it's a it's a funny, fun sort of crying. God, I, we can only hope. If you don't need voice acting, would you be uh, interested if asked? I mean, maybe. I mean, my schedule notwithstanding. I, I I did do some brief voice acting in a zombie puppet musical called... Um, oh my god, why can I not remember the name of it? Does anyone remember the name of that thing? It, it, I have a copy, it's in my car. Misfit Heights, that's the name of it. Uh, and that's it. That's the only thing I've done. Oh, and um, for uh, Raunchy, the animator on YouTube, one of his very early animations, I did some very mediocre voice acting for it that was turbo-powered by Raunchy's astounding animation. Base upgrade. Build a cooler box. Build a sphere workbench. Okay. Managing pal. Managing pounds. Do we have anyone that does mining? Oh, Kativas do. Okay. SC2 announcer counts for it. Well, I was being me. And I'm 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 pretty good at voice acting me. Watch. Here's me being sad. Fuck, I'm fucking sad. See, I'm, do I'm good at doing an impression of myself. So I was able to do that on demand. Is that the sound it makes when a unit gets killed? It's true. <laughs> Let me go see how to make a cooler box. Oh, I need more ingots. Do I just need to unlock more things? Or is it that I need to be level 13? Because I'm level 12? Alright, so I should be able to smack a tree here. Figuring it out. Damn, Exesis. I think I'm spending too much time doing... <laughs> <laughs> Demi XYZ says, I think I'm spending too much time and energy towards cognitive entertainment, like books and complex games. Just some weird goat noise, Sean, is maybe the type of entertainment I need to unwind. Oh, dude, yes. Yes. 
<laughs> it's like, I'm here for you. I want you to understand that. I'm here for you. Go over to my box and say, bye, 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 bye. Spear. Metal axe. Yeah, I mean, there's there's entertainment that I watch when I'm trying to unwind. Streams is one. Oh, that's a big one. Um, honestly, Dota's pretty good for chilling me out. Like going on walks. Curious you can do a sheep noise too. I because a sheep a sheep is the I can only do a goat. Because I, I think that with the with the goat noise, I flatten my tongue and I curl it around my lower teeth. So then all of a sudden, this is like I can just make this kind of talking noise. And then I just modulate my voice in various ways. And then if you go ha 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 see how it just like becomes goaty as I just let my tongue slither around my teeth. But with with, with a sheep, it just seems like a ah, it just seems like I'm going the letter A but shaking. Ah, ah, ah. That's all I have. That's all I got. <laughs> so base upgrade. Cooler box, sphere work bench. Level 13. Ah, I remember what I was doing. Oh, I didn't take it. Sheep and ghosts are so strange. I so want to be just... I, I just want to push back on that for no for no helpful reason. Like, no, they're not. They're totally normal. No. Do you make cat noise, noises, Sean? Probably not. I mean... Meow... There you go. I mean, my my cats have weird meows. Like Despy goes, eh. she does her little like, eh. Eh. it's really weird. <laughs> Ed says Sean just heard a cat is Despy hungry. Despy girl is a little hungry baby. Check P. Skilled Islander. Oh, I have a Swee? I don't know, I have a Swee. Eh, what do you know? What do you know? I think you might need more chickens. You might need more chickens, Blood Vomits. What, a, what an asshole. What a, what a rude thing to say to me. Okay, so let me, let me, let me, let me. So I need to hit level 13. I will chop some trees. Rhizome says, thank God I'm alone so I can make stupid animal noises. Yeah, that's the only reason I feel comfortable making them right now. It's because I'm completely alone. Oh, oh, hi. Whoa, whoa, you're on the keyboard. Hi, here, let me move this. Come here. How you doing, sweet pea? Why two bows? Uh, Calabunga, I only have one bow. You might uh, be seeing double. <clears throat> All right, I'm getting, my, I'm getting my left hand groomed. This is good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's really good. Thank you. Thank you. I love you too. And am I level? All right, well, I need to... Gain a level. Is there someone I can... Is there someone I can kill? Sealed Realm of Frozen Wings. This staircase sucks. <laughs> Should 
Shouldn't. Shouldn't. Should not. What am I even out here for? What am I doing? I don't know, I'm gonna go explore. <sighs> One time. One time. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Good cat, good cat. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. God, I don't know how people play games where you need to hold W all the time. Like, my, my hand is tired. Just gonna wander a little bit. This cat's name is Despy. D E S P Y. Level up. Crossbow? I want to unlock a crossbow and a cooler box and a metal spear. Training dummy. Wall torch. What? Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm going to get this. This is, this is the most insane thing I've ever heard. Unused stat points. Well, this attack seems like terrible. I feel like there's nothing better than getting health, stamina, or weight. I mean, I, it's so hard to convince me. Uh, ow. Pokemon with a gun? Hell yeah. Honestly, there's something that's just so smart about just putting guns in the game, because, like, aiming and shooting is such a known, fun combat mechanic. I'll go across the bridge. Monkeys with automatic weapons is always good, right? Indeed, Death Us. God, my hand is exhausted. So I'm going to need to leave a little early today in about one hour's time. So, we'll see. Aren't we all monkeys with automatic weapons? Do you consider my tone? Genghis Colossus can't wait till day nine gets his hair plugs and has hair down to his shoulders. Oh, I'm doing that. They're going to be like, where would you like your hairline? And I'm going to be like, just above the eyebrows like that. I want to look like a Chia pet. Oh, I forgot about Planet of the Apes. Brisla. Oh my god, a Megasphere. Oh! Holy shit. Okay, I'm, I'm running away. Shit. Uh-oh. All right. 
I shall go along the coast. I'm going there. I'm going to the orange. Oh, God. Oh, God. You lose stamina in the... Oh, my God. You lose stamina. Is there, is there a shore? Oh, God. I can't see anything. Oh, my God. I can't see a damn thing. This is quite terrifying. Uh. All right. Okay, I can see a little better now. Okay. I don't think I can build a torch or something here. Okay, so if I go to my build menu, you know, if I go to my technology, is there a way to build a torch? Mounted torch? Is there a torchy torch? And hell torch right at the top. Perfect. Hey. All right, well. Got enough of that. No one see any wrong. Barely see anything. Ooh, this looks like I can land here. Great. All right. Yeah, what's happening? Oh, because I said, ooh, wait, how do you make a torch? And a bunch of people are like, if he doesn't do exactly what I say right now, I'm literally going to rip out my eyes. And so, you know. I am allowed to take 20 seconds to figure out how to make a torch on my own. I'm allowed to do that. I'm an adult. I think it's settled now. That's good. It's good. No, it's good. Everyone needs to learn at some point that I'm allowed to. I'm allowed to look. I'm allowed to look. My eyes are already ripped out from the gut noises. Mm hmm. I'm looking for a rock. Oh. Cool. What's this? Cool. Look at this. Wow. Shit. Alright, I'm looking for a rock. Maybe I'll just wander around. Looking for some rocks to hit. It's especially hard to see. Because I have bright lights on in this room, you know. So that's... Yo, I'm so good. Just wandering there. Pick this up. Right. 
navigate. I can't see anything, man. I'm navigating via the compass. I'm doing some instrument flying right now. So these are some 17s, some 20s. Okay. Cinema. So it's so smart to have a 38, level 38 dude there. Shell it. To the base. The base is the place. Oh. Oh my god, I need to go to bed. <sighs> Hungry. Ah. Uh. Uh. Oh, 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 this is not, well, whoa, oh, oh, okay. And now to discover what our goals are. Base upgrade. Cooler box, that's right. Because I hit level 13. I now need to make a cooler box. No, I need to exit this and then go to a cooler box here. Uh-oh, always need more ingots. John plots ingots. Start him up. I did it. Okay. No rest for the wicked. All right, so how many... Have I maxed out my pals? Yeah, nine pals. What? Get out of there. Incapacitated for something. Extremely unhealthy due to neglect. I don't understand what this means. All right, I'm... I'm reading the Kativa's thoughts. I sense that you're depressed. What in fuck's name? Pal deck. No, party. Handiwork, transporting, gathering. It's not that bad. Well, How's this up, DJ? Sup? You know, I I'm gonna pull out one of. I'm gonna put in one of these daydreams. You got captured. Welcome to work. A wave, thanks. Oh my goodness. Oh, the sleepies just hit me. Oh my god, dude. I've been going so hard. I've been absolutely plowing lately. This is incredible. I'm really so much. Like, had an 8, a 9, a 10, an 11, 12. 12 45, then went live at 1. Boom. Now, now I'm a little bit of a grog doggy. Um, is this one? Is this one dead? Oh, that's so sad. A lot of damage in there. What is this? A ho hoof crates? Hoof crates? Shit. 
shit. Got him, got hoof critiques. No, who critiques? Hoof critiques. <laughs> it never occurred to me how stupid of a name hoof critiques is. It's so funny. Hoof critiques. Alright, what am I doing? I gotta. I gotta eat. Eats uh, meets uh, venom gland. Oh shit! Yeah, I gotta go deposit a bunch of stuff. Killing the game lately. Just notice them thighs. Yeah. So let me take one half. Put that there. Let me go here and then do it me. I don't know, say who crates? Yeah, I mean. Excellent. Okay, so what is next? So I needed to make. Oh, yeah, that's right. I need to make a super cool crate. Oh, ingot. Got it. Cooler box. Small food vault. Oh, and I already have an ice pal. Nice. We're all working. Bonk. Bonk. Bang. Boom. Uh, but you're my stepbrother. Says, what would you recommend ordering from the Ethiopian restaurant Walia? Well, first of all, get some of their honey wine. That's going to always taste good. Uh, I also recommend getting uh, for entrees the Kitfo. And if they asked, uh, would you like it rare or raw, you say raw. You want uh, the Kitfo raw. Uh, the Shiro is incredible. Uh, so Kitfo is um, raw minced beef, lightly simmered with clarified butter and a spice called Mitmita, which is really good. Uh, Shiro is like a pureed chickpea with butter, garlic, so good. Um, Yodoro Tibs, which is the chicken tibs, or their lamb tibs, is also um, excellent. So uh, those would be my my three big recommendations. Um, you can also get sambusas. Those are a pretty good appetizer. Um, Ethiopian coffee is also delicious. We'll serve it with uh, cane sugar and a mint leaf. It's so, mm, it's so good. Yeah, the, the lamb tibs is starting to become one of my faves. So let's let's rethink about what it is we're doing. We've made a cooler box. Wait, wait, wait. security settings. All right, nice. Pal stuck in water. Your pal stuck in water, pal. Uh, this is not what I want to do. Sphere workbench. Very well. All right, so. Have I even unlocked a sphere workbench? Maybe level 14. Mamma mia. I don't believe it. I'm going to go chill it. Hoof Pratis. Useless. Not as useless, but pretty useless. Dual wield bows in this game. You can dual have bows. <laughs> All 
Alright, so I go in this direction. Lamb Tibs are really good. Gored Gored is also really good. But yeah, no, I love Ethiopian food. I, I actually am probably going to try this month in February to learn to make one Ethiopian dish. Stefan Sweet says, Dan, do you remember where you ran to the wandering merchant with two guards? I'm trying to find him myself in this game? I have no idea. Cooking stream? Ah, probably not. Uh, map. Chill out. Oops. Oh, fuck. Holy fuck, I need to be farther away. Boss first kill. You have a new pal. Oops. Saddle? I can ride the chill. Oh my god. Hold on. I'm going to go to my technology. No way, dude! No way! Why, why is it? I need, I need to slay more. What the fuck? Dynamic events. Ooh. Probably not strong enough to kill that member set. Probably. Probably. Like, for instance, do you prefer to stream a game like Dota, where you're too focused to talk or chat much? Or a game like this, where you can play and easily talk? Definitely the game that I can play and easily talk. I mean, it's one of the reasons why I've gravitated more towards turn-based and slower-paced games. Just don't know how to chat and talk at the same time. It's too hard. Oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Is it time to do, do a rants in a pants? Uh-oh, oh my god, oh. Oh!
Oh my god, I got a rant coming on. Here it comes. Here it comes. This question is a great question from Genghis Koala, who's been hanging out all day. It says, any mental tricks you do to get yourself from a consuming mindset to a producing mindset? Creating often feels a lot uh, like a lot of activation energy is needed, and self-criticism can also be crippling. Yeah, so if, if I, to maybe reword what you're saying, I almost imagine you're asking something like, hey, I kind of want to work on a prototype of a game in Unity. Or after their recent changes to their terms of use, um, Unreal, we're going to prototype in Unreal, or Godot, or Godot. So, how do I make sure that I don't just sit at my PC and want to open up a stream and want to open up a game and want to like do a bunch of other stuff? How do I get myself into like the mode where I'm actually making shit and not distracting myself endlessly? Is what I'm understanding. You, there's no fucking way. So. Paul says, yes! Okay. Fuck. No! Okay, so the question is... I'm going to reframe your question. Sean, how do I just sit down and start making something? Because it can feel so unbelievably, stupidly easy to open up a stream, put on Netflix, play a game like Pal World that's satisfying enough and actually quite rewarding to play. Oh, why don't I just keep doing that? Man, it's been two weeks and I haven't gotten to write my novel or work on my game or something like that, right? So, I want to begin by observing that the most... Okay, I'm, I'm going to do a little thought experiment with you. I'm going to do a little thought experiment with you. What's the number one quality or the number one characteristic or property of a person? There's a cave here. I don't even notice that. Oh my god. What's the number one quality a person needs to have for you and they to get together as a couple? The answer is, you live near each other. That's it. That's the number one. It's not about personality or looks or any of that stuff. It's, the, it's if you live next to each other and you go, oh, well, like, obviously. Like, obviously, that's that makes sense. Okay, what's the number one quality that a published author needs to have? It's that they write words a lot. They write a lot of words. I know of people that are still working on their first novel. They're still working it and reworking it and reworking it and reworking it. I know people that have written 15 books. Ten of them are garbage. Three of them are published. The other two, they're trying to get published. I mean, I want you to be as not abstract as humanly possible. What do you need to do in order to make your creative work? And Genghis Kual, since I'm playing a game, will say that you're working on a game or writing a book because those are two easy ones to reference. Let's be really unbelievably, stupidly not abstract at all. Just literally, what do you need to do you need to be sitting at your computer writing code. Or you need to be sitting at your computer typing sentences. Or you need to be setting aside time to think about what the designs are and writing those designs down. You literally need to do shit. And I mean this in the strongest sense of the word. You have to do things. Now, that doesn't mean you need to get motivation and that the motivation can be fuel for you to do things. That doesn't mean you need to have anything happy occurring in your brain or body when you're doing things. You could be, if you're an author, sitting down and writing and going, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this. And as long as you're typing stuff, you're going to be more successful than someone that doesn't really type very much, but always has a great time doing it. So I want to be abundantly focused on what the goal is in the first place of sitting down and doing things. Your goal is not to be motivated, or to have happiness occur, or to have joy, or to have confidence, or to avoid self-criticism. Your goal is how do you make yourself do stuff. Now, I'm not going to be a proponent of like, you must suffer. 
<laughs> I'm not going to be saying that. But I just really want to be clear and observe that the doing of things is what we care about. As an example, there have been, I remember for um, the current project that has turned into the project that um, my game studio is focused on, I mean, I could point to periods of six months where I just found the entire process miserable. I mean, yeah, but it doesn't need to be pleasurable. It, it needs to occur. And I just made it occur. So this is not like anything necessarily helpful in terms of here's the action you should take to get into that mindset. But I want to be really clear what our goal output is, which is doing stuff. So for instance, for me, summoning frustrated energy is really powerful for me. That's something I do. So if I wanted to like really get up, and go to the gym, and I didn't want to, I'd go, ugh, this is so stupid, I don't want to do this, ugh. I guess I have to do this to, you know, get in the shape I want to, ugh. And then that gives me enough energy to get out of bed. And I don't really think it quite as consciously as that, but this is an example of a type of energy I give myself to get started. Okay. So, Genghis Kuala, you talked a little bit about wanting to um, stop consuming and start working. Um, first, I would encourage you to do the following. Create a space in your house where nothing happens. For me, it's going into the bathroom and just sitting on the toilet with the, you know, toilet lid shut. I just sit there, I turn off the lights, I don't bring my phone, I don't bring anything, I literally just sit there and I just sit alone. So for instance, let's say that I were writing a book and I have just finished my stream and I need to go get into writing mode. I will go into the bathroom that's right there, I will turn off the lights, I'll sit on the toilet and I will just experience sitting alone. And you will be really surprised how loud your own brain is and how many thoughts and distractions and all this stuff. Getting in the zone to work is about learning how to turn off and quiet those voices and pay attention to the certain things you do want to pay attention to. It's about figuring out how to embrace solitude and uh, avoid distracting yourself. It's not to avoid external distractions, it's to avoid distracting yourself. So jokingly, in the past, I've called this embracing the void. You need to find void time. You need to find some void time where there's nothing going on, man. Embrace the void. So. If you're someone that is very consumer habitized, like I sit at my computer, I control T, boom. I'm opening up a tab to see what's going on on Twitch or on Twitter or something like that. Going and embracing the void is a really great way to just go, like, okay, all right, cool. That's not there. All right, nice. Huh. Ha. Huh. Second thing I would do is I would try to create an ideal distraction-free workplace. Um, Windows has multiple desktops. So you can have your work desktop and your play desktop. Um, I, I don't do that. But I do deliberately close all these applications and I turn my phone off. Like literally, I would encourage you just as practice, because again, we're not getting to the doing yet. We're getting to the space in order to do. Turn off your phone. Unplug your internet, right? Do, like literally, you are allowed to do insane things like this. When I say insane, that's maybe the wrong word. You're, you're allowed to do extreme things like this, like Turn off all the lights and electronics in your house. Turn off all the clocks in your house. If you have clocks that have blinking lights, those distract me, so I just unplug them. Turned off my phone, unplug my internet. Okay, it's time to work. I also, if I want to work, I don't use two monitors. I use one monitor if I want to work, so I'm only looking at one thing. Think of, for you, what your ideal workspace is. And again, if you're writing a book, 
things I said might help. If you are trying to work on a game, some of the things that I'm saying might help. Uh, where is the PAL stuff? Sphere workbench. What? Hold on a minute, hold on a minute. Hold on. Medieval or pressure stone. What? There it is. Okay, so. Um, you have this idealized workspace where you're going to be able to sit down and work. So again, we've gone from, I'm in consumer, consumer mode, and then I need to go find the void. I need to go sit alone, letting my brain get quiet and just slowly turning it off. Um, then I go to my workplace where there's no distractions at all. And here's the thing that I want you to think about when you're doing your work. How do you make yourself keep working? You don't need to feel good to do it. You don't need to feel happy. You don't need to feel inspired. The first thing I want you to do is just to figure out how to do stuff. Do anything. I want to make a game. I have no idea what game to make. Cool. Copy another game. Just literally start making stuff. And then you can do something way down the line. Like after you've recreated another game, go, how do I want to change this thing? So that way it's not a copy. It's my own thing, right? Great. Just, just get in the habit of doing things first. Get in the habit of doing things. I want you to make wrong things. I want you to make terrible things. I want you to make things that you think are bad. Just do shit. You don't, like... I cannot stress enough the goal output of everything I'm saying is how do you just do things? Not do good things, not do bad things, not do things with a predictable output, not do things that you're comfortable with, not to do things you're uncomfortable with, just, just to do stuff, just do things. There are artists that do one kind of art and they do variations on it for 40 years and that is all that they do. Do things. Now, one of the things that can be really helpful for this... Oh, look at that. Axe? Sure. One of the things that can be really helpful is to have different persons in your brain and you slip into that different person mode. So, for instance, there can be a decision-maker brain that decides what we're going to do this week. Then we can have a doer brain that does stuff during the week. And then we can have an evaluator brain that evaluates at the end of the week. Don't ever let these times overlap, period, until you are pretty much done. Or excuse me, until you are pretty deep in your creative process and you feel more comfortable. So for instance, if I were working on a book, I might say, okay, on Sunday, I am going to try to, you know, let me do it as a Monday to Friday, so that way we don't assume seven day work weeks because you need a life. Hey, on Monday, all I do on Monday is try to decide what I'm going to be writing this week. Hmm, okay, you know what, I'm gonna probably do my third chapter and I really think there needs to be an action sequence to kind of set up the big inciting incident of my book, okay. And I think this should happen, and this should happen, and this should happen. Tuesday comes along. Write all day Tuesday, write all day Wednesday, write all day Thursday. Don't go, ah, this action sequence sucks. Don't do that. Don't, that happens on Friday. You're just writing an action sequence. And the, what you are allowed to do is you are allowed to do two action sequences. You are allowed to write Chapter 3, version 1 on Tuesday. Chapter 3, version 2 on Wednesday. And chapter 3, version 3 on Thursday. You're allowed to do... You're allowed to make more stuff, but you are not allowed to stop making 
and do any consideration. And then on Friday, you're allowed to look and go, this sucked, this sucked, this is okay. Mm, I like this, I like this, I don't like this, I don't like this. I'm done, have the weekend, Monday. Take all the learning from last week, what do I wanna do? Splitting these things up very deliberately is incredibly helpful to give yourself permission to do things, okay? I cannot stress enough, we're not talking about anything except that one fucking thing I emphasized at the start, which is do stuff, 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 okay? Do things. Why do we have a day set aside for, for planning and making decisions? Because you got you gotta do stuff. And it's very easy to go, I think an action sequence would be cool, but oh no. Do I have the skill to make an action sequence? Ooh, I don't know. It's very easy to second guess yourself. It's very easy to be in the middle of writing and go, ah, this doesn't seem very good. How do I make it good? Right? It's very easy to be looking back at your work and going, oh, I'm really disappointed in this. I need to like change what my workflow is. No, you don't need to do any of that shit. You're just evaluating that. The more that you can, because like, okay, tell me you haven't done this. Tell me you haven't been at an event and spilled something and been like, oh, sorry, didn't mean to spill that. And then you don't fucking clean it up. Because someone else is going to do that. Someone else goes, sir, we got it. Don't worry about it. Oh, thank you. Oh, God. Whew. Well, I, and, and you don't feel that bad. You don't feel, you don't feel bad. So... Do that, but for yourself. Do that, but for yourself, giving yourself permission to just, I'm gonna make these decisions. This sounds fun as hell. Oopsie, oopsie, and then I can upgrade, base upgrade. Oh, I have two bases now? Oh my God. Cooking pot, weed plantation, build a mill. All right. Yeah, so I mean, I cannot overly stress enough how important it is to just get in the habit of doing stuff, just do things. As to use myself as an example, this week and next week, I'm trying to figure out how to fill time because the Magic the Gathering set is coming up after that. So I'm going to be playing some Magic the Gathering. So that week's clear. I just decided I'm going to stream Power World all week. Done. Is that good? Is that bad? I don't know. I just decided it. On Friday, I'll think about it. Literally on Friday morning, I have a meeting with Eric where I'm just going to like chat with him and think about it. He and I and Ed are going to. Think of some plants, right? Done. There you go. Um, and then oh, we'll probably make some decisions coming up on the next week. Make those decisions. Sometimes I have made a plan of what to do over the next month of streaming, and then I just don't worry about it. And a lot of my streams are pretty terrible. <laughs> they're pretty... They're, I have been boring on air for like at least 10 of the 30 hours I stream a week most weeks and now i stream more like 20 hours a week and yeah about half of those are garbage hours now eh, whatever it's fine just keep making stuff and i mean i i've done some good stuff i've done some really good stuff i've done some some pretty garbage stuff <laughs> some pretty not good uh content pretty frequently but you know i don't care just just gonna keep doing stuff And I think that it's it's very easy to evaluate things as quality and not quality. Because there's so many things out there that are high quality. And you go, how do I do that? How do I do the high quality thing? And then you start to make something and it's bad quality and you go, oh, how do I stop doing what I'm doing and start doing that high quality stuff? And the answer is, that person that made the high quality thing, they made 30 pieces of hot garbage 
and they're showing you the two good things. That's it. That's all they're doing. Oh my god, Bats Go just raided us. Oh my god, the greatest Go content creator on all of Twitch, Bats Go, has stopped the buy. What an absolute treat. Oh my god, what a, what a dream. Oh my god, I'm so happy to see you. How are you, dude? How are you doing? Oh, and let me sort by pal deck. Uh, where's farming? Which one's farming? Farming is this one. Oh, you can farm. You can farm. Welcome. Byron says, doing great. How goes your pals? Well, they're puking everywhere. They're having a great time. A 3-3 three, three raid in progress. I know. Once AlphaGo came along, everyone started doing a 3-3 three, three raid. Uh, what am I building right now? Oh, I need to go back to my tech tree. And the next things I need to unlock are a wheat plantation and some other stuff, and I can't do that. So I will try to make myself a crossbow. Are the nails still here? So, so hopefully, hopefully that was, hopefully that was a reasonably helpful um, rant about getting in the mind space of just doing stuff. Just doing, 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 doing. And I mean, I literally cannot stress enough your goal is to do i think it's very easy to start intellectualizing okay so uh you know i need to so i think that maybe the problem is that i'm evaluating too much and, and all the, and, and some of those things can be helpful for yourself when you maybe look at your each minute of your brain and go wow 80 percent of my minutes are spent deciding if this is good enough i really got to turn that particular thing off that's that's totally fine but the goal is not to get the right balance. The goal is to do, to do stuff. Uh, oh. Does it have low range? What is this? One shot plot. Holy, that's amazing. Rhinelian says, I've been struggling to even find things to do as of late. feel like I have no creative desires lately. Copy stuff. Figure out how to start doing things first, and then how... Oops, I'm starving to death. Figure out how to start doing things first. Then figure out how to do something interesting and creative with it second. Find out real fast is how I think about all stuff. Oops. All right, let's go somewhere, shall we? I'm strong. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna kill Penking. Yeah, and I think that if you were asking me, like, okay, Sean, but like in terms of deciding what to do, creating. And evaluating what should the pie chart be? It should be like one one ninety eight. It should be like one percent deciding, one percent evaluating, and ninety eight percent doing stuff. And that's how you should start any creative career or creative uh, endeavor. And eventually, you'll get to a point where it's like ten eighty ten. <laughs> Choosing what to do, doing it, evaluating if it's good or bad. And a way to think about this is, um, oh wait, 
E, E, E. A way to think about this is, um, let's imagine that we are doing Magic the Gathering card designs. If I design 10 cards and five of them are good, I have five cards for my game. But if I'm focused on output and I design 200 cards, but only 20 of them are good, I have 20 good cards in my game. So you wind up having way more of a bang for your buck when you're doing it in that way. I'm going in. Maybe I'm actually hanging out a bit because my health is low. My name is Yolo. Holy shit, I'm so bad. This is the game. I'm mean, says, but don't you also have to do more work to value all those 200 cards to see which ones are good? I guess, but I mean, is it is it easier in terms of minutes to evaluate a card or to come up with a card? Much easier to evaluate a card. Evaluating things is way fucking shorter. So if you're evaluating 10 cards, that might take you... If you're evaluating 10 cards, that might mean it takes you 10 minutes, or if it's 200 cards, it's 200 minutes. So in terms of orders of magnitude, oops, it's just not, it's just not that unreasonable. And, the, and I think the point is not that the point is not about the total amount of minutes being lower. It's about if you don't have something, there's nothing to evaluate. So you need to have something so you have something to evaluate. Take it all. And I think that this is the part that applies to a lot of people who are trying to get in the habit of making things creatively. They'll go, oh, dude, I, I'm not entirely sure what to choose to do. What? Oh, my God! What's hidden? Oh shit. Holy shit. I'm never using the right click button again. Holy shit, this guy's. Oh my god. Alright, never give up, never surrender. The point is, there's this preventative force in people that says, I don't want to make something unless it's good. Unless I can think about how to do it and I know how to do it and I can imagine it being good, and then I finally give myself permission to do the thing. Oh, I've done the thing now? Well... You just wind up with not that much content. Whoopsie daisies. And I think way too often people don't let themselves make stuff. I remember that there was this person I met early in grad school uh, who was giving me a ride somewhere because I'm, I'm a mooch and I didn't own a car. Um, oh yeah. Do I have level up stats? And I remember asking her about, uh, you know, what she like to do for fun. And she's like, I like to write. Uh, and I have this book. I was like, oh, get, like, how's it going? Can I read it? And she's like, no, 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 I, I'm still working on it. I'm like, all right, cool, yeah, great. 
Um, and like three years later, I talked to her about the same book. She's like, no, 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 you know, I'm still, I'm still working on it. It was like three years later. And, you know, it's not that you can't have a single book that you're working on for a long period of time. That's totally fine. It's that, like, she had not been rewriting or writing more or producing more. She just gave herself the justification to not work, to not do things, to not do. So I need to repair my outfit. I want resistance to cold. Ingots, my god. Yeah. Genghis Qual says, could another way to phrase it be allowing yourself to make mistakes without judgment? I'm again going to say that is not the point because the point is do stuff. If you can do stuff while being very judgmental, great, as long as you're doing. If you're making mistakes and judging yourself and seeing them and it hurts really bad, but you make yourself keep going, that's the thing that you need to do. Now, obviously, long term, it's, that's not sustainable because eventually you're just going to be so devastated that that's, that's likely going to have other deleterious effects. But again, the goal is not to give yourself permission to make mistakes. The goal is not to be motivated. The goal is not anything except do stuff. Do stuff, do stuff, do stuff. All right. And, you know, this is part of the reason why I'm almost a little sheepish about, like, yeah, look, I know this kind of sounds stupid, but, like, really, this is, I, I mean this, is it's very easy to quickly drift away from doing stuff. It's very, very easy to start stepping into that. Oh, did I take too many berries? Right. So, like, an example is, I said that your main focus should be to do stuff. And it's very easy to go, yeah, well, I feel a sense of self-judgment when that happens. Ah, so maybe the, the problem is that I'm being self-judgmental. And I need to figure out a way to not be self-judgmental. I mean, it's not. Your goal is to do stuff. And is it true that... Ah, well, my problem, the thing that is getting me posed here is that I am too self-judgmental and it I don't know how to turn it off. Great. It's fine to identify for you the problem that is in the way of doing it. But I have known people that are really good. They, they used to be judgmental and they figured out a way not to be judgmental. Now, uh, and then... Um, they used to get easily distracted, and then they figured out how to eliminate those distractions. And I mean, like, they they, fi they fixed all these things, but they're just their output is still very very low. And and I'm trying to sort of like shake my hands in the air and be like, you need to pay attention to it in this particular way because. Um, I think it's very easy to, you know, get unfocused on that. But I want you to know that even though I'm speaking in a very blunt and harsh way, you don't have to be blunt and harsh with yourself. Things like, you know, figuring out how to be gentle with yourself is, is great. You know, if you're gentle with yourself, presumably for some people that could help them work even longer. But, you know, in a sense, your creative work, people who consume your creative work, they don't care what the process was or what the emotional highs and lows for you were. They care about the creative product, they care about the output. When I read a book, if there's a really riveting chapter, 
I'll just experience a riveting chapter. And that's it. All right, I'm going to try to do this run once more. And then I got to go. So, I mean, a, a lot of the stuff that, that I do, I mean, one of my friends just jokingly calls this Jedi mind tricks on yourself. You're just constantly trying to, as a human, trick yourself into being productive or trick yourself into creating or trick yourself into doing something that you actually want to do. It's all you're ever trying to do. Oh shit, I thought I got out of the way, fuck. Holy fuck, I'm getting owned. Holy sh... All right, I'm gonna collect those, save, and close. <laughs> Going back here. One Oleso says, when did you realize creating was going to be your career? Uh, there was no realization. I, I view this as a decision, not like a... Something that's happening to me, if that makes sense. And there, there's other things like, I am choosing to do this. Can I make a living off this? That's its own discussion, right? All right? I'm clearly not strong enough. I need to level up some more. Uh, you know, and, and that that is just that is just doing math. That's just like, oh, okay. Looks like uh, I'm earning a thousand dollars a month. Hey, that's pretty good, but not enough. You know, one of those sorts of things. Uh, okay. Return to title. Perfect. Well, with that, I'm going to be wrapping my stream of Pal World for the day. Tomorrow, I'm going to be streaming all dang day. And rescue staff Sheriff and Despy are doing wonderfully. In fact, Despy and Sheriff have both gotten really, really cuddly lately. And it's really, really nice. Despy loves when I'm here and she just sleeps next to me and purrs all day. It's so great. So I'm going to go see you tomorrow. I'll be streaming probably from like 1 to 7.